We are the Global Goals Studio. Thank you for watching. We're talking now about food security in the context of the UN Sustainable Development Goal number two, which is zero hunger. And we are delighted to be joined by three people for whom food security is a passion. Chef Jose Andres, my good friend, is the founder of World Central Kitchen, a global nonprofit devoted to providing meals in the wake of natural disasters and much more. And we're also joined by Stefan and Aisha Curry, co-founders of Eat, Learn, Play, an open-based organization rooted in three of the most vital pillars for a healthy childhood, nutrition, education, and of course, physical activity. Full disclosure, uh, Jose and I have collaborated on several books together, many meals and countless rum sours. So Jose, this summer alone, America has experienced so many disasters, the hurricanes, the droughts, the wildfires, all the way up and down the West Coast in flames. Meanwhile, World Central Kitchen has been extremely busy cooking several millions, tens of millions of meals in hundreds of cities. So how do you prepare for crisis on these kinds of scale? What, what do you do to scale up this kind of organization? Well, I, actually, I think what World Central Kitchen does very well is that we almost never have a plan. Uh, sometimes I feel when the teams have plans and things don't go as planned, everybody freezes. I know because Mr. Curry is on the phone, but on, the, on, on this call, but obviously he knows about improvising, mm -hmm. but scoring every time, no matter what is the play. We adapt better than anybody. So on this pandemic, we saw it very early when we were in Japan responding to the cruise ship. And right there, we began feeding people with COVID, keeping our teams healthy and keeping the 6,000 people on the cruise ship healthy. So what we did was, this is gonna reach America. Uh, we ended in Oakland, also feeding the Princess cruise ship. And this was serendipity that uh, obviously we've done uh, over 30 million meals, but has only been possible thanks to amazing leaders and amazing partnerships in the community like the one I have uh, with Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Curry. Uh, they, they, we partner World Central Kitchen and their uh, foundation, Eat, Learn, Play. They, it's amazing what they do, not only in Oakland, but beyond. And we did something like, it was simple. People were hungry and restaurants were closed and people in the restaurant business with, were, were without jobs. What if we put those restaurants up and running, all of a sudden the restaurants can hire people again, Restaurants can buy from the local vendors, farmers, fishermen, others. And in the process, we are able to feed the community. Only in Oakland, we've done uh, still to this day, 25,000 meals a day. Uh, we had hundreds of restaurants participating, thousands, thousands of restaurants all across America. And we've shown that sometimes the very big problems, they have very simple solutions. Thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Curry, World Central Kitchen was able to be helping uh, in Oakland and beyond. That's great. 30 million meals is not a small number, Chef. Well, Stefan and Aisha, you two are doing such honorable work. What was the motivation behind launching Eat, Learn, Play? And what are you hoping to achieve with this? Thank you so much. Um, with Eat, Learn, Play, you know, our whole goal was to ensure that kids have access in the Oakland area to, you know, quality nutrition, amazing education, and safe places to play. And we launched last July, mm -hmm. so a little over a year now. And we never thought we'd have to be ramp up our, our, our production so fast when the pandemic hit. And so we're, we've been so grateful um, to be working with Jose and World Central Kitchen and all of our partners in the Bay Area. I mean, you talk about community um, in Oakland, it's already a place where, you know, there is so much struggle. And then when the pandemic hit, even more struggle and job loss. But when you talk about community and seeing people come together in a community to help one another, I've never seen a better example. So it's been really amazing, um, this full circle model um, that Jose and World Central Kitchen has created, being able to reopen, help reopen so many restaurants, um, over 130 restaurants now in Oakland, 70% of which are minority or woman owned. And I just think it's been so spectacular um, what's happened so far. Absolutely. No, she said, she said it great. I mean, 
I think it's just in terms of uh, meeting the need right now. The need is continuing to grow, so the work uh, needs to grow right along with it. And uh, I think to to Jose's point earlier, Chef Jose and, and Aisha's point, it's about community. It's about the partners that you get to work with and amplifying each other's uh, mutual interests and and pulling as many resources as possible um, so that it, uh, you know the 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 work is going to the right places. It's a great partnership. Please stay with us. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back after this message. You're watching the Global Goal Studio. Welcome to the Global Goal Studio. We're talking about food security and the UN's target of zero hunger worldwide in 10 years. We're joined today by Chef Jose Andres, founder of World Central Kitchen, and Stefan and Aisha Curry, co-founders of Eat, Learn, Play. The UN Sustainable Development Goals is to end hunger by 2030. The world, however, is not on track to meet that timeline, and the pandemic has made that target even more difficult. Stefan and Aisha, how has Eat, Learn, Play weathered throughout this pandemic? Um, it's about, again, the partners, I think, you know, with World Central Kitchen, uh, teaming up with the Unified School District, the Alameda County Food Bank, Al Alameda County Community Food Bank that's in the Bay Area. Uh, there's so many volunteers and people that have stepped up to the plate. Um, and as you kind of meet the need on the ground level, continue to get meals where they need to go, open up as many restaurants again, get people back in, uh, into the kitchens, that's, that's huge. And then as you think, you know, down the road, Trying to hit certain policy issues that will continue to, um, you know, prioritize uh, the need that kids have um, for just a basic meal that will hopefully get them started on their day and through their year. Um, and so those conversations are always ongoing. Um, as you said, as you said, Chef, there's there's never there's always a plan, but you got to be nimble and be able to react. Um, and I think it's been it's been amazing. Our, our team's been awesome. Absolutely. Um, and uh, we're going to continue the fight. It's it's a uh, it's a long road ahead. We all know that. Yeah. So um, just trying to you know keep your feet on the ground. Yeah, and these are tough times, Jose. You know, the we're talking about world hunger as well. The uh, United States is one of the richest countries in the world, if not the wealthiest. There are and yet we know there's so much hunger here as well. And that there are all of these countries that are not as well off where hunger is multiplied too. So it's UN General Assembly week. Everyone's talking about the sustainable development goals. What do you want to see world leaders do, the international community do about hunger today to get to this ambitious goal of zero hunger? Uh, what I want the world leaders to do is stop giving less speeches and more boots on the ground. I'm sorry, but we've been announcing that we will end childhood hunger. I don't know, I'm 51 now, but I remember being very little and being celebrating when I heard on TV, we're gonna end childhood hunger by the year 1990. Uh, quite frankly, let's face it, we're far away from it. I don't think we can be clapping. I don't think we can be feeling successful, even if sometimes seems that these little improvements, but the reality is this, even in countries like America, in countries in Europe, on paper, some of the richest countries in the world, we still have a big gap. And we have especially children that often, they don't know what they're gonna be eating tomorrow. We have to start giving the speeches, but then putting the resources and be bold. The 21st century is a moment to be bold. We must announce that hunger will be eradicated from the face on earth, and we should put all the mechanisms in place to achieve that. One community at a time, we can do this. If we end food deserts in every city in America, we can be closer to do this. We need to stop, use, we need to stop throwing money at the problem and start investing in solutions that make sense. That's why boots on the ground is the only way forward. And this is for anyone. Um, it's not just about supplying food for the table, it's also about supplying jobs as well. Why is it so important to be able to do both and what has been impacted? Aisha, you can go first. Yeah, you know, I think it's such a full, full uh, circle issue, right? Um, a lot of these small owned businesses, small owned restaurants, 
Um, th these are the people that are struggling and that are, that are needing meals as well when we get into a situation like this. And so being able to have this full circle um, model to be able to help the restaurants reopen, get back, give back some jobs, um, um, reduce the unemployment rate just a little bit um, where we can. I mean, it makes such a difference. Um, and so I think everything just goes hand in hand. It really does. Absolutely. And really tactfully, she's talking about uh, even with, you know, the produce that might be going unused um, in, the, you know, in the supply chain and getting those uh, those packages to the right to the right families in, in a timely fashion so there's not waste and you're still yeah. being able to support the industry as a whole. So um, this is the learning curve for you, everybody yeah. in terms of what has been at stake you know, in the last six, six months, six, seven months. And um, it kind of points to, you know, there, there is light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully, but how long that is and to, to, uh, to get to a point where we're truly making an impact to eradicate hung hunger across the board, um, that's a big part of the equation. Mr. Poloff, thank you for what you're doing. Sadly, we cannot talk about hunger all day. We have to leave it there. Thank you, Stefan and Aisha Curry, and also my friend, Jose Andres. The racial and economic disparities that have long existed in this country have only been widened by the coronavirus and amplified by the most recent acts of injustice. People around the world are coming together with greater urgency to demand action. At Bank of America, we know we all have a role to play to overcome the very real consequences of systemic racism and inequity. This includes individuals, governments, nonprofits, and the private sector. Racial equality and economic opportunity are deeply connected. That's why Bank of America has committed $1 billion over four years to address critical gaps in affordable housing, access to health care, employment and job skills, and the resources small businesses need to succeed. We can do more, and we need to do more now to further advance racial equality and economic opportunity for all.